South Sudan is really green, in contrast to Sudan. Actually, most of the country is covered in tropical forests, as well as savannah. There aren't many tourists there, and I believe the South Sudanese people are very welcoming and friendly. I make travel and geography related videos and currently I'm traveling. I'm on a three week travel and I will tell you more about it later. I will keep posting, zooming in on videos in the meantime, but I will not be as active when it comes to commenting and responding to your messages. But in one week, I'll be back. Today we are zooming in on... South Sudan. Yes, South Sudan, the newest member of the UN and home to this bird. In this video, I'll present to you the geography and travel suggestions for South Sudan. And I seek to find the most correct information. Now I make mistakes sometimes, so you're welcome to let me know if I say anything wrong. So that this video will be as correct as possible. Now let's zoom in. South Sudan lies in East Central Africa and is landlocked. It gained independence from Sudan in 2011, making it the newest member of the UN and the most recent sovereign state with widespread recognition. To the east it borders Ethiopia, to the south lie Kenya, Uganda and the DRC. To the west it borders Central African Republic and to the north it borders Sudan. And if we zoom in here on the map we can see there are some border disputes. Here over the Kafia Kingi area, a mineral rich region, here lies also the Radom National Park. Another dispute is over the Abyai area. We just covered this not too long ago in the Sudan episode, but it comes down to that the area has a special administrative status and Sudan and South Sudan agree to share this area. So it belongs to both countries. South Sudan also has a border dispute with Kenya over the Ilemi Triangle. Both countries claim it. The northernmost point of the country lies here, in the White Nile bordering Sudan. The easternmost point lies here, touching Ethiopia. The southernmost point borders Uganda, and the westernmost point lies in this nature reserve bordering Central African Republic. South Sudan is a pretty big country, coming on number 41 in area, just bigger than France and just smaller than Afghanistan. With about 12.7 million people, South Sudan comes on number 74 in population. So the population density shouldn't be that big, and yes, there are about 20 people per square kilometer. And South Sudan comes on number 164 in population density. It is estimated that life expectancy in 1960 was 31.7 years. In 2019, that number has climbed to 57.8 years. South Sudan is among the countries with the lowest life expectancy, but has experienced a huge change. 26.1 extra expected years to live. That is among the biggest changes that have happened since 1960. It's amazing. The capital and biggest city is Juba. Other cities or villages are Ye and Wau. Hmm, all short name places. The official language in South Sudan is English, and there are more than 60 other languages spoken there, among them Juba Arabic, a variation of Arabic. The name Sudan derives from the Arabic Bilad al Sudan, meaning the land of the blacks, referring to the dark skin of the inhabitants. And of course, south to describe its location. Now we'll zoom in on the capital, Juba. Let's see, Juba lies here in the south. So let's get a little closer. Here lies Juba International Airport. And here we have the White Nile. Let's see what happens here. We have the US Embassy, Embassy of India, South Sudan Parliament. Here we have a park, a coffee shop, many places to eat here too. Ocean Blue restaurants, Embassy of the Republic of Turkey, Home and Away, United Nations Children's Fund, Logali House, Juba Landmark. I wonder what that is. It's an accommodation. Okay. Let's see if we can find any street view here. Hmm, there's not a lot, but there is some here along this road here. Happy Street. Let's, let's pay a visit to Happy Street and see what happens here. Okay, we are on a car and here is the streets with some trees along the way. We have cars. Huh, a lot of these cars are big cars. Some small ones there. A motorcycle, it's a big poster. Here are some more houses. Another big car, tires on the roof. Yeah, so this is Happy Streets. Doesn't look too crowded here. Yeah, there is a little sidewalk to walk on here. Okay, let's see what else happens here. Hmm, I'm gonna try going there. Okay, we have another street that looks like a water tank. 
We have some more houses. I can't really see what that is. It looks like a flame. More motorcycles. Here we have a wall. I wonder what happens behind this wall. Yeah, we have two guys here. It looks like they're jogging. What is this? I really enjoy getting an impression of South Sudan by going into Street View. I feel like I get to know the country a little bit better. Oh look, there's a boat rental. So you can drive on the White Nile here. And there's a soccer field for if you're feeling active. Landscapes! And we are of course starting with the topography map. What I first noticed is that elevation differences aren't huge and that the country overall has a high elevation. It looks like it's lying on a plateau, but we can see where the most low-lying areas are. We can kind of see a diagonal belt with proximity to rivers. These areas lie roughly 400 meters above sea level. South Sudan is really green, in contrast to Sudan, where a big portion of the country is desert. Among the landscapes we can find here are swamps and wetlands. Matthews here gave me some information on South Sudan and tells us that the second biggest wetlands in the world can be found here, in the north central region of the country. The Nile River forms a marshy land called the Sud. It is the largest freshwater wetland in the Nile River basin. And this area has made travel hard for people over many years. From the ancient Egyptians to the expeditioners who wanted to find the source of the Nile River. The Sud, meaning barrier or obstruction, sure has made it hard to travel here. But it is a great resource for animals. Animals love it here. Over 400 species of bird live here, including the great white pelican as well as many types of mammals, such as antelopes, hippos, and the African wild dog. Okay, let's move on. The higher elevations of South Sudan are to be found in the south and west, with elevations from roughly 500 meters and up. A typical landscape here is tropical forests. Actually, most of the country is covered in tropical forests, as well as savanna. Other animals that live in South Sudan are elephants, lions, giraffes, zebras, buffalo, warthogs, chimpanzees, baboons, crocodiles, and ostriches. So much life here! I'm impressed, South Sudan! The highest elevations in the country lie in the very southeast, at the Imatang Mountains. The tallest point here and the tallest point in the whole country is Mount Kinyeti at 3,187 meters or 10,456 feet. And look at the view here. I don't know if lions can climb all the way on top here, but if they could, they sure would have a good view over their lion kingdom. Yeah, I love the Lion King. Rivers! I like to use the topography map to show the rivers too, because it gives a good overview. And you can see clearly which is the biggest river, and I've already mentioned it. The Nile River. More specifically, the White Nile. The Sudan video explains more about the Nile, the White Nile, and the Blue Nile River. So give it a watch to understand more. Also, the Uganda video explains a possible source of the Nile River. If you're interested, I'll put a link down below so it's easy to find. The White Nile enters South Sudan from Uganda at this point, flows north and cuts the country in half, flows through the wetlands, the Sud, where a lot of the Nile's river is taken up by the vegetation and providing water to wildlife and livestock. And then it doesn't really want to enter Sudan just yet, it takes a turn here and enters Sudan at the northernmost point of South Sudan, having traversed tropical rainforests, wetlands and savanna. Another river in South Sudan is the Bar El Gazelle, meaning Sea of Gazelles from Arabic. It is a main western tributary of the Nile and connects other rivers coming from the western part of the country, from the highlands close to Central African Republic. The Bar El Gazelle streams through the Sud wetlands, through this lake, Lake No, and comes together with the White Nile at this point. Lakes. Yep, I just mentioned it, Lake No. Lake No is special. You see, the White Nile comes from Lake Victoria, then the next major lake is Lake Albert in Uganda, and Lake No is the next major lake that the Nile is connected to. Not too far away from Lake No lies Lake Ambadi, also lying in the Sud wetlands. You know, I like animals, so I just want to tell you that this lake is home to the shoebill. It is a large, stock-like bird with a large beak. Looking like a shoe, therefore shoe bill. Let's do random street view. Okay, where do you want to go in South Sudan? Maybe we can see the wetlands lying here or maybe the mountains. Let's check it out. Okay, I can only see two places we can choose. <laughs> um, so let's just try this place then. Yep, and we aren't outside, we are inside someplace. We have a table with a chair here we have some something to drink. Ooh, what is that? Looks like food, I just don't know what kind of food it is. Yeah, this looks like a, a restaurant or a cafeteria. And a Christmas tree! Well, that's nice, they celebrate Christmas here and they use Christmas trees here too. So maybe this picture is from Christmas time. 
What else do we have here? Employee self-service. Yeah, so this is probably a cafeteria. With some flags. Umoja goes live. Television screen. And here's the menu. Cool. Now I think I saw some more street view happening here in the south. Here I see a place. Let's see what happens there. And we are again inside bedroom. We are inside someone's bedroom, guys. Or, or is it a hotel room? Kind of looks a little hotel room-ish. That's a cool keyboard. Now I really want to see what happens on the outside. So let's get a little bit closer to Juba again and see what happens here. Yep, no street view here either outside. We're staying inside. That's cool. That's okay. Because this is a gym. Yeah, for people who like to do some weightlifting and some strength exercises. So yeah, if you're once in South Sudan and you really need to work out, then come to this place and ask if you can work out here too. So yeah, this is a gym in South Sudan. Opposite side time. I put my ruler in the capital city, Juba. Move it for 20,000 kilometers around the globe and yep, we are in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And it looks like the closest land is this little island, Malden Island. Part of Kiribati. And now it's time for the travel suggestions. Now South Sudan is not the safest place to visit. There are risks in the country and the US government advises against travel there. But that does not mean you cannot travel there. In fact I think traveling to South Sudan would be an amazing experience. There aren't many tourists there and I believe the South Sudanese people are very welcoming and friendly. So let's start our South Sudan adventure in capital city Juba. Get your first impressions of the country by walking the streets and visit the Juba markets. And what I like to buy when I'm out traveling is buying clothes. Imagine finding a nice t-shirt or pants at the Juba market, then returning home and people are asking, oh, where'd you get that t-shirt? And you can just say, oh, I got it in South Sudan. That's the kind of souvenir I prefer. Now, after shopping, you might feel hungry. Relatively close to the market lie multiple restaurants, for instance, Hamza, with a nice garden. Now we're ready to see some nature. And from the restaurant, there is a two kilometer walk to the Afex camp. This is an accommodation for your stay in Juba, but from here are great views of the White Nile. You can easily walk around here and enjoy the view of the river. There's a big shipwreck lying here. It is even possible to rent a jet ski here and drive along the river. Now we're ready to move away from the city and see some more nature. Not too far away from Juba lies the Bandingilo National Park. And this national park is one of the least touristed national parks in the world, which might be a good thing for the animals living here. Have you heard of animal migrations like the Serengeti migration, where a lot of animals move together, happening seasonally? Well, the second largest annual animal migration happens in this national park. Multiple species of antelope are on the move here. The leading South Sudan travel agency, Exploring Tourism, can help getting you to this national park. Which is home to and get ready to hear some more animals, cheetahs, caracals, spotted hyenas, and many other animals. I found a review. We pledge to do a lot to enhance the park, as to give tourists the most pleasant tourism destination in the world. It is along River Nile with vast open land with vast magnitude of various animal species. South Sudan is a little densely populated country, making room for lots of wildlife for wetlands, mountains, savanna, tropical rainforests. It is very little touristic, but there are still lots of things to experience both in Juba and outside of Juba. I hope the country will receive more tourism in the future as I believe the country has a lot to offer. These were some geographical facts on South Sudan. Next time we're gonna go to South country number two, South Korea. And we're zooming out. Thank you for watching, guys.